In this video, we will practice finding the end behavior of rational functions. That includes horizontal asymptotes and slant asymptotes. This is AP Precalculus Topic 1.7. If you did not watch the previous video where I introduced these concepts, you should probably watch that first. This video will make a lot more sense if you do. I will either put a link in the upper right hand corner or you can find the link in the description. If you appreciate this content, please don't forget to hit that like button. For each of the following, determine if the given rational function has a horizontal asymptote. If it does, write the equation of the horizontal asymptote. For number one, we notice that the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator are the same. So yes, there will be a horizontal asymptote, because the right end behavior, for example, will equal the limit as x approaches infinity of 3x squared over 2x squared, the quotient of the leading terms. But at this point, the x squared and x squared cancel each other out, and we are left with the limit equals 3 over 2. So that's the end behavior, and since it is a constant, we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 3 over 2 the left end behavior would work the same way. By the way, I'm writing all of this out for instructional purposes, but you would do this in your head. In number two, we see that the degree of the numerator is greater than that of the denominator. In a previous video, we learned that that means that there is no horizontal asymptote. That's because the right end behavior, for example, will equal the limit as x approaches infinity of x to the third power over 5x squared. But this simplifies to 1 fifth x, and as x approaches infinity, this limit is infinity. So there is no horizontal asymptote. There is a slant asymptote, which would be y equals 1 fifth x, but they didn't ask about that. For number three, the degree of the denominator is bigger than that of the numerator. In a previous video, we learned that in this case, there is a horizontal asymptote, and specifically, it will be y equals zero. To see y, look at the right end behavior, for example, which would equal this. But five x to the third power divided by x to the fourth power simplifies to five over x. As x approaches infinity, the denominator is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, so the overall value of the fraction is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, approaching zero. Number four, the degree of the numerator is bigger. So that means there will be no horizontal asymptote. If you forget the rule, you can do an analysis like this. Look at the right end behavior, for example, which will equal this expression, which simplifies to this. But as x approaches infinity, three times x just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So the limit is positive infinity, so no horizontal asymptote. There is a slant asymptote, which will equal y equals three x. Rather, I should say that the slant asymptote is parallel to the line y equals three x. For number five, we are given r of x in factored form. So we should look at the leading term of each factor to figure out the end behavior. For example, the right end behavior of r of x will be the limit as x approaches infinity of 10x squared over x squared because 2x times 5x is 10x squared and x times x is x squared. At this point, the x squared cancels out and we are left with the limit of 10. So, ha, that made a hexagon. Anyway, the, uh, there is a horizontal asymptote, and it is y equals 10. Number six, to understand the degree of the numerator of q of x, look at the leading term and the exponent. In the denominator, of course, we have the leading term 3x to the third power. When the degree of the numerator is greater than the denominator, there will be no horizontal asymptote. This expression simplifies down to one third x. As x approaches infinity, this expression just gets bigger and bigger. 
so this limit is infinity, thus no horizontal asymptote. There is a slant asymptote. Well, the slant asymptote is parallel to y equals one-third x. Number seven, just look at the leading term 3x. Don't forget that it is squared. And in the denominator, we have the leading term 2x squared. The right end behavior will be the limit as x approaches infinity of 9x squared, that's 3x to the second power, divided by 2x squared. But then the x squared will cancel and you are left with a limit of 9 halves. So the horizontal asymptote will be y equals 9 over 2. When the degrees are equal, we know there will be a horizontal asymptote. Looking at number eight, you should be able to tell at a glance that yes, there will be a horizontal asymptote because we can see that the degree of the numerator is two. It's the x times x. And the degree of the denominator is also two, x squared. When the degrees are equal, there is a horizontal asymptote. We can find that horizontal asymptote by considering the right end behavior, which will equal this. At this point, the x squared will cancel out and leave us with a limit of negative one. So the horizontal asymptote is y equals negative one. Number nine, you should be able to quickly tell that there is no horizontal asymptote for number nine. The degree of the numerator is going to be x squared squared, so that's x to the fourth power times x, so that's x to the fifth power. Meanwhile, in the denominator, we have x squared times x, which is x to the third power. When the degree of the numerator is greater, there is no horizontal asymptote. For example, the right end behavior is given by this expression, which simplifies to the limit as x approaches infinity of 4x squared. As x gets bigger and bigger, this expression approaches infinity. So, no horizontal asymptote. For the next few problems, we will write limit statements for the end behavior. For number 10, we notice that the leading terms of the numerator and the denominator have the same degree. That means there is a horizontal asymptote. And uh, specifically, the horizontal asymptote will be y equals one third, because the x to the third power would cancel out, leaving two over six, which reduces to one third. So that's going to give us the left and right end behavior. Kabam! Number 11 is given in factored form, so we focus on the leading term of each factor. Don't forget about the exponent. The right end behavior of y will equal the limit as x approaches infinity of 16x squared over 6x squared. But then we see that the x squared will cancel, leaving the limit to equal 16 divided by 6, which is 8 over 3. So that's the right end behavior, and the left end behavior will be the same when it's a constant like this. So here's the left and right end behavior for number 11. For number 12, we only have one term in the numerator. In the denominator, focus on x to the third power. When the degree of the denominator is greater, the function has a horizontal asymptote y equals zero, and that will be the left and right end behavior. For example, the right end behavior would be the limit as x approaches infinity of x squared over x to the third power, but this simplifies down to the limit as x approaches infinity of one over x. As x approaches infinity, the denominator gets bigger and bigger and bigger, so the value of the fraction gets closer and closer to zero. For the last four problems, we will write a limit statement describing the output values for the following graphs and verbal descriptions of the input values. For number 13, we need to write a limit statement that describes what happens to the output values of f of x as the input values decrease without bound. Since the input values are decreasing without bound, we are talking about the limit as x approaches negative infinity of f of x.
In other words, the left end behavior. And f of x is approaching this horizontal asymptote of negative 1 on the left. So this limit is equal to negative 1. Number 14 says the input values increase without bound. So we want the right end behavior. In other words, the limit as x approaches positive infinity of g of x equals, on the right hand side, g of x is approaching the horizontal asymptote of 1. So this limit is equal to 1. For number 15, the input values increase without bound. So this is a right end behavior again. So we write the limit as x approaches infinity of h of x. But on the right hand side, the output values increase without bound. So the limit is positive infinity. When the limit is infinity, we should write the word is instead of an equal sign. Save the equal sign for numbers. For number 16, the input values decrease without bound. So we want the left end behavior. So we will write the limit as x approaches negative infinity of k of x. On the left hand side, the output values increase without bound. So this limit is positive infinity. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe, but also if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link, which will take you to the whole unit playlist, or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.